Today, I'm walking you step-by-step step through two methods to automatically categorize your expenses in Excel. And stick around to the end, where I show you how easy it is to update the file with next month's expenses and automatically categorize them. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, and let's get started right now. The first thing you need to do is download your expense data from your credit card provider. I've got a link to a video where I show you how to do that, but in this video, I already have mine downloaded. It's in this Amex Working 01 folder. So I'm just gonna open that data up and I'm gonna copy the data in my download and then paste it into my new spreadsheet. I don't like the formatting here. I'm just gonna press Control-1 and then unselect this wrap text to make it fit a little bit better. The first thing we're gonna do is create a lookup table. And we're gonna use this lookup table for both methods. To get started on that lookup table, I'm gonna add a new sheet down here. I'm gonna rename it and call it lookup table. And I'm gonna start with the unique formula. So the unique formula is gonna bring in a unique list of values. And in this case, we want the unique expense descriptions. So I'm gonna highlight those expense descriptions, close parentheses and press enter. And Excel gives me that unique list of expense descriptions. And then I'm gonna copy that and just right click and paste the descriptions as values. And now I am gonna uh, create a category column and put these descriptions into categories. So this first one is, I'm gonna put it in streaming dash TV, and I'll quickly run through the rest. Now we've gone through and applied categories to these different expense descriptions. Now I'm gonna highlight the data, go up here to insert and press table. You can also press control T to turn this into a table. Make sure you tell Excel that this table has headers and click OK. And I'm gonna change the format because I really don't like this green format, but this looks a lot better. And make sure to name your table. That's just gonna make our jobs a lot easier down the road. So we're gonna call this the lookup underscore table. So we've got our lookup table that we're gonna use for both of our methods to categorize expenses. Now let's move on to method one here. The first step of method one is to paste that expense data into Excel, which we've already done here. And I'm gonna highlight this data and I'm gonna turn this data into a table as well. Amex are, applies a category, but we don't like that category, which is why we're creating it our own. So I'm gonna insert a column to the right here and we're gonna just call this the real category. And to populate that real category, we're gonna do an XLOOKUP and an XLOOKUP isn't really all that complicated. So XLOOKUP and the lookup value is the description. So we're gonna look for the description, press comma, the lookup array is where we're gonna look for that description. That's in the description column of our lookup table. And then the return array is the array that we're gonna return when we find that lookup value. In that case, it's the category so we're then we're gonna close parentheses and press enter. And because we're using an Excel table, that formula is dragged down to all the descriptions in our expense data, and we've categorized them with that formula. Now I'm gonna show you how to update this table with next month's data. Of course, you've gotta download that, but I already have mine downloaded here. So I'm gonna open that data, and I'm gonna copy it jump over to our expense category spreadsheet and just paste that data as values and click OK. That data is automatically added to the table. The X lookup is pulled down and our categories are quickly applied. We've got a couple descriptions here that aren't in our lookup table. And to add them, all we need to do is just copy that description, jump over to the lookup table, paste it here, and then apply a category. And you can see we've gotten rid of those pound NAs when we updated the lookup table. This first method looks good, but there's a couple columns here that because of the way we're pasting the data in, we've got to deal with all these extra columns that I don't want to see. And there's also some room for error when you're pasting data in from other files. So let's jump into method two that's going to improve on these things and more. For method two, we're not going to be copying and pasting any data. Instead, we're going to be spending a lot of time in this data tab. So data, get data from file, and then we're gonna click on from folder. 
and we're gonna find the folder that our credit card data is stored in. Mine's right here, and I'm going to click open. So Excel shows you the files that are in that folder. This looks good, and I'm gonna click transform data. And so these are the columns that are populated when you get that data from the folder. I only want content and name, so I'm gonna press control, click on name, right click and remove the other columns. We do want to add a column, so I'm gonna click add a column, custom column, and we're gonna call this column import. And the formula we're gonna enter is excel.workbook. And I'm gonna open parentheses, double click on the content to populate it, close parentheses and click okay. Moving on, I'm gonna click on this action button here and I'm gonna unselect everything but data. All we want to bring in is the data. Click on the action button again, and you've got all these different columns here that Excel wants to bring in. That looks good, and I'm gonna click OK. So these are the contents of the file that's in the folder that we just imported. And moving to the advantage of method two over method one is we get to pick the columns that we want to see here. So I'm interested in name, press control, I'm interested in date description and amount, everything else can go. So I'll right click and I'll remove the other columns. And we can take advantage of Power Query to clean up our data here. You can see the real data actually kind of starts down here. So I'm gonna filter out this amount column on, I'm gonna filter out the null values and click okay. That's starting to look real good. This first row here are actually our column headers. So I'm gonna click home, I'm gonna click Use first row as headers to populate those. This column here, I'm gonna rename file underscore name. And that's gonna tell us the file that a given piece of data is from. This looks really good. The last thing I'm gonna do is change the name of this. I'm just gonna call it expense data folder. And then click close and load. We've imported this data in with Power Query, our expense data. Now we need to quickly import the lookup table that we created in this step one and add that into Power Query as well. So I'm gonna go navigate to that lookup table, click on data from table or range. This looks good. Click close and load. The last step is to merge our expense data with our categories. So to do that, go to data, get data, combine queries this time and click merge. The first table we want to merge is our expense data folder. The second is our lookup table. And we want to click on the field that those two have in common, which is our description here. And as you can see, the selection matches 11 of 11 rows from the table. That's good news, so click OK. We've got our expense data populated here, and then we've got this lookup table column. Press the action button unselect the data here and just select category and click OK. And Power Query has populated those categories against our spend data. And we'll just rename this to spend by category so we can keep all this straight and then click close and load. Let's walk through how easy it is to update this with the next month's data. I'm gonna jump back over to the folder containing the expense data. And I'm gonna drag in the next month's data into that folder. Jump back over to Excel, click on query and refresh. And there's the next month's data with the categories automatically applied. And if you're still here, check out this video where I show you how to combine data from multiple credit cards and I will see you next time.